We're live. Hey guys, what is up? Adrian Nickelodeon coming at you from Sydney, Australia. And today we are going to be setting up the Rurok Atlas 3.0 Spitfire Edition helmet. So I've already done the unboxing of this helmet. We went over all of the tech specs, pretty comprehensive video. It went for almost 20 minutes, but I went through almost every single feature and upgrade that they've done to the 3.0 helmet compared to the 2.0. So if you wanna check that video out, I'll link it down in the description below. It's been raining over the past. Man, I keep on hitting this. Hold on guys, I keep on hitting my microphone. So today we're going to be setting this helmet up because it's been raining over the past couple of days. I still haven't tried this thing on or cut the tags off. So we're gonna do that today as well. Some of you guys had some questions in the unboxing video. So I'll answer that as well. And there were some things that I missed that I'll go over real quickly while we set this helmet up. But today we're hopefully gonna try and break the cycle of crappy chrome visors. This here is the Atlas 3.0 visor that they sent me. This is an extra one that they sent me. This one's chrome and guys, I'm a little bit scared to put this on the bike because I've had horrible, horrible, horrible dealings with chrome visors in the past. In fact, let me just show you something real quick. This over here is the very first helmet that I ever rode with on the road. This is it. This is helmet number one, Adrian Nickelodeon. You guys haven't seen this on the channel before. I never used this for motor vlogging or anything like that. This is actually the helmet that I crashed in in 2008. I did a video about that a couple of years ago where my girlfriend and I got T-boned in an intersection and um, yeah, pretty bad crash. You can see here the chin bar is cracked. But that aside, this here on the front is a chrome visor. This here is the original clear visor. You can see the scratches on there from the crash. Just wanted to show you guys something. Can you see the difference? Cause I can't. 15 years later, all of the chrome has rubbed off this visor. I've had multiple pairs of sunglasses that have had chrome lenses that have been scratched up while I've had them in my bag or just storing them in my pocket, etc. My last helmet, which was an AGV Pista GP, I bought a chrome visor for that. And only after a couple of days, there are already some rub marks and smudges on the visor so honestly I've been scared away from using chrome visors for a while so I don't want to jump the gun and say that this thing's sick because like it looks sick it looks it looks the goods I definitely want to rock a chrome visor on this helmet because it would look like a fighter pilot helmet but again I don't want to jump the gun and tell you guys that they're awesome when I haven't really thoroughly put it through its paces so depending on when this video comes out you may have to wait a month or two head back to my channel and um, we'll do a review on the visor after we've given it a bit of time but in saying that the black visors that they have for these helmets. This is the 3.0 visor for the Spitfire helmet that we've got down here. Perfect visor, amazing quality. Got one on my old Atlas 2.0 and yeah, it's sick. I love it. Every day of the week, I'll rock one of these. I actually don't think I've ever even put the clear visor on this helmet. I've only ever used the black visor. Yeah, I can definitely attest to the quality of this thing. The optical clarity is fine. There's no distortion through the lens when you're looking out of the helmet. Black visors are sick, nothing to worry about. But in saying that, I really, really, really really want to put the chrome visor on this helmet. So we're going to do that today. Rurok have changed their visors compared to the 2.0. I'll just give you a quick comparison. Wow, almost dropped that helmet. Holy crap. <laughs> so as you can see here, this is the comparison of the 2.0 and the 3.0. You can see here on the 2.0, they've got these plastic covers that um, I think a lot of people felt that they were a bit fiddly. So they got rid of them on the 3.0. Similar sort of locking bayonet pin that they've got on here. So you just spin it pop it out there's one on the other side here spin it pop it out toolless you don't need any tools to do that easy to do with your fingers it actually came out a little bit easier than it did on the 2.0 and then you should be able to just pop the visor off that's it so then we've got the chrome visor we'll just pop the hole through there i might actually put the the bayonet pin in so this doesn't pop out of place Come on, get in there. There we go. Quarter turn. Done. And then flip it over. And line that hole up there. Bayonet pin. So these are the these are the pins. This is one of the one of the design features I didn't like when I review, reviewed the 2.0. They've rolled it out on the 3.0. Yes, they have improved the visor with it, with uh, getting rid of those little plastic things that are on here. 
but I feel like you can lose these really easily. It does feel pretty secure. I know that the visor's not gonna come flying off with those pins. Definitely a better locking system than something like this here on this old 15 year old helmet. You've got a little thing here that you need to pull down with your fingernail to unlock the, the visor. These mechanisms always used to break. The springs would come out on the helmets. I mean, I worked at a motorcycle shop and I used to see this shit come in all the time. Let alone the fact that it's taxing on the fingernail. Just a really crap design. I'm glad most manufacturers have moved away from something like that, but I still, I'm still apprehensive i still don't know whether a locking pin that can be removed and taken away from the helmet and potentially lost is a good idea but it definitely is much better than some of the locking mechanisms we've had in the past but here it is let's do the peeling off of the protective film on this chrome visor is that black no that's a chrome visor it looks black in this light Probably not to you guys because you've got the light shining off it, but oh man, that looks sick. That looks sick. That looks like a fighter, a fighter pilot helmet. It's sort of like a dark shadow chrome. That's cool. Pretty keen to get that on the bike and see what it looks like in, uh, in front of the camera. Hopefully it's dark enough for you guys not to be able to see my face through this visor on the camera, but time will tell. So yeah, there it is, Spitfire set up with the chrome visor. Something else I didn't mention in the unboxing video was that they have chin guards on these helmets. Great for winter riding, keeps all of the wind from coming up underneath the helmet. If it's a cold day or a crisp morning heading into work, they should be removable. And in all of the helmets that I wear, I actually take them out because I've got a big beard. So I should be able to just, I haven't actually read the instructions. I should be able to just pull this out, yep. There we go. I'll store this somewhere safe just in case I want to put it back in, which is probably never because I need that extra bit of space on the front here. All you bearded guys would know all about that. Uh, just inside there, we've got a three-stage vent on the inside, so closed, half open, fully open. And I read the manual, something I didn't mention earlier, is when this thing is fully closed, it actually redirects the air through this vent up across the visor, the inside of the visor, to try and keep it fog free. I guess that would work to an extent, but if it's really like hot and humid or if it's cold and rainy, you'll probably still have visor fogging issues, which is why they've got pin lock available visor inserts for all of these helmets. But yeah, that's it. I guess that's the shadow chrome visor on the... Atlas 3.0 Spitfire helmet. Now, I haven't tried this on yet, guys. The 3.0 comes with this Fidlock buckle system, so right now it's locked. They actually held a motorcycle up on a crane in their in their factory with this thing just to show how strong the Fidlock buckle is. I think they said the motorcycle was about 180 kilos. To unlock it, it's as simple as pulling on this red tab. That's it. So quick and easy. It's like 10 times quicker than using a D-ring buckle system, which is what I've used over the years on all of my helmets. As soon as they sent me the 2.0 that has the same Fidlock chin strap, I can tell you honestly now, guys, I will never, ever, ever buy or willingly wear a helmet with a traditional D-ring. It's just so much quicker, so much easier. You head down to the shops, helmet on and off. As soon as you get home, turn the bike off, helmet off, super quick. Don't have to faff around. You can do it easily with gloved hands. It's great for beards because you're not threading your beard hairs through the D-rings, which was a major issue with most of the other helmets. I'd have to push the beard out of the way to try and get the, the buckle strapped up. And even then, I'd be riding and I'd do a head check and I'd feel it like pulling away at my beard, which is a pretty shitty feeling. But this thing here, it's just so sick. I love it. Fidlock, absolute game changer. It's patented technology. I'm pretty sure it's not patented to Rurox. So I'm, I'm, I'm really curious as to why a whole bunch of other brands aren't using this. It's just, it's, it's freaking amazing. I can't, I can't stress enough how amazing this thing is. But yeah, 3.0 has the new liner on the inside. I'll try and show you guys on camera. If it doesn't show up very well on camera, I'll try and get the light in there. I might put some B-roll footage in here and just show you guys the inside of the liner. So that's the 3.0 liner. It feels a lot smoother. There's like a rubberized patch right on the top of the head there with the Rurok logo. It just feels, it feel, definitely feels more premium. That was one of the biggest issues that guys had with the 2.0 that I had heard. I actually didn't have any issues with it, but a lot of people said that the liner on the 2.0 didn't feel as premium as it should for a high quality helmet. That's the liner there for the 2.0. Again, I'll try and get the light into the liner. I actually didn't mind it. I thought it flowed a fair amount of air. It was pretty comfortable. I haven't tried on the 3.0 yet, even though it's been here for a week. So let's do that right now and uh, see what all the hype's about. All right, boys, so I'm just gonna turn around. No peeking for obvious reasons. Now they recommend you put it on the back of your head first and slide it forward over your face. So we're gonna do it, which isn't the way that I usually put a helmet on, but we're gonna try that out. 
So back of the head, slide it down. Oh man, bro. <laughs> Oh. oh man, I don't want to swear, but geez. That's sick. That is a completely different liner experience. Sorry guys, I'm doing the whole Rob the Dentist thing. You guys remember that TV ad from the 90s? Rob the Dentist, hello. I want to do that again. Hold on, I'm going to put the helmet on the way I usually put it on. I usually put it on from the front and push my hair back in the helmet because I don't like it sticking down over my eyes. So, yeah, yeah, that's sick. The helmet slides on so much easier than the 2.0. The liner feels nice, soft, definitely feels like a premium liner. It doesn't push on the side of the neck here, on the side of the neck here, just underneath the helmet. I'll show you guys real quick what I mean. Let me take this off. Yeah, I'll show you guys, I'll show you guys real quick what I mean. So this is the, this is the 3.0 entry hole whatever you want to call it to stick your head into the helmet i wish i had one of those helmet donuts that would help out so much right now this is the 2.0 now this is something that i mentioned in the 3.0 unboxing video the 2.0 has these little flaps and i wasn't quite sure why they were there i'm pretty sure it's just there to to create sort of like a tighter seal around the around the neck but they were kind of not really needed and they kind of got in the way especially on hot days it was just like i don't really understand why they're there but they've taken them out of the 3.0 liner there's the comparison 2.0 3.0 3.0 doesn't have these extra little flaps it's got sort of like a leatherized leatherized piece here on the side closest to the helmet and then you've got that really soft it's like a friggin lounge man i don't know how else to describe it this here this here feels like nylon this feels like silk like it's it's probably nylon as well i guess but nylon feeling a little bit scratchy sort of like a sort of like a like a like a basketball jersey if anyone's ever had silk sheets in their life these feel like silk the lining on the back of the helmet feels a little bit more plush inside the helmet definitely more plush on the inside of the helmet as well yeah guys they've fully redesigned the liner on the 3.0 for the best man oh man i was not expecting that i really enjoyed the liner on the 2.0 so yeah i'm surprised i'm surprised the hype the hype is real for the uh for the 3.0 but yeah there you have it guys just quick setup of the 3.0 helmet we're going to finally cut off this little tag on the bottom here to make it official definitely going to be wearing this out on the bike and in videos going forward fits nice feels nice premium quality still don't know about that visor whether it's going to hold up so check back on my channel in i don't know maybe a month or two and i'll do another quick video just letting you guys know how it goes one other thing the bags that come with the with the helmets this is the 2.0 bag this kind of feels like the inside of that helmet this is the 3.0 bag silky sort of touch kind of like the inside of that helmet 3.0 so the bags have changed slightly not a big deal for someone that rides with just one helmet because you're going to be wearing the helmet all the time but just for example i've got my agv pista gp here which is what i used to wear on the channel for the past seven years this thing has been sitting on top of my fridge for probably about four five six months and it is freaking filthy no idea where the helmet bag is for this but i definitely should have chucked a helmet bag on there yeah i hadn't used helmet bags for the longest time but now that i've got a whole bunch of helmets that i'm using on the channel i find that i use these things more often than not but uh, yeah, just wanted to quickly mention premium helmet, helmet bag. But yeah, Rurok, attention to detail. It's crazy how this helmet looks almost exactly the same as the 2.0, but I feel like it's just leaps and bounds ahead in terms of quality and just premium feel, premium fit, super light. Last year when I got the 2.0 helmet, I did a comparison to the AGV race helmet that I've got, and I was actually pretty surprised at the results. The Rurok helmet was lighter by about 150 grams compared to the carbon fiber race helmet so yeah oh an honor honorable mention to the carbon fiber they use t300 aero nautical grade sorry aerospace grade carbon fiber on all of their helmets and then they've applied this pretty 
awesome finish to the Spitfire helmet, but rest assured, carbon fiber quality, super light, premium helmet. Looks like this, uh, this visor is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but yeah, let's see how this thing performs on the bike. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button down below. If you're on the Rurock hype train, I'd appreciate if you guys could share this video on some of your motorcycle riding groups on Facebook or something like that. Just get the word out there. I really enjoy doing these review videos, and if I've got more people tuning into these videos, then I've got more opportunities to do more stuff like this on the channel. But with that said, let's get on the bike, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.